Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. So while we are waiting on Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kun to catch up with volume 15, I decided that I wanted to read another manga because I do like doing these manga reactions and I was thinking about what to read and about a month ago I watched Twittering Birds Never Fly, The Clouds Gather and there's a link to it down below um, to that movie reaction if you want to watch it before diving on into this video. But I decided, I'm like, that movie left me in such a cliffhanger that I wanted to see what happened next. And they are making a sequel movie to come out at some point. And they are making an OVA, uh, Never Stay Gold, that's going to do a little bit of backstory with some of the characters that will probably come out this year. But I thought, I, I don't want to wait! <laughs> because it left on a cliffhanger and obviously um, some people commented on, on Vimeo especially, they were like, he doesn't really die. And I'm like, don't spoil this for me. I don't know these things. So I'm like, I want to watch, I want to read the manga and catch up to it. So we're going to read Twittering Birds Never Fly, um, do a volume at a time um, while we're waiting on Hanako to release and then to catch up to this. I think right now there are six volumes out for this, so it should just be a couple weeks to catch up. But I really like doing these manga reactions. I think after this series, um, there's a specific series I have in mind that I want to read afterwards, but uh, we'll get more into that later. But anyway, so this video, if you noticed in the thumbnail, is going over volumes one and two. I started reading this manga series after watching the movie just to see how far the movie, what the movie actually covered. And the movie covers, it seems, chapters one through seven and part of chapter eight, which we're going to start on chapter eight, which is in volume two in this video. So I read chapters one through seven. Uh, if you watch the movie reaction below, it pretty much covers everything. There are a couple of things I'm going to note over here to the side that are a little bit different than the movie that I wanted to touch base on before we dive into chapter 8 in volume 2 of Twittering Birds Never Fly. So, or, um, Seziru Tori Wa Habatakanai. You know. <laughs> so, um, a couple things that are different. One, um, the movie starts out with Kuga and Kageyama's interaction. It's the same way in the manga, but the manga gives a little bit more explanation and exposition between those two characters. It doesn't just immediately start with them making out. There's a little bit of a, a subtext there. Um, also, Kageyama in the manga discovers the camera. And I actually like in the movie a little bit more because in the movie it just hard cuts from Yashiro watching them make out to Kageyama with the camera being like, stop videotaping us. And I kind of like that a little bit better. But the manga confirms it. The manga, the difference between the manga and the movie is the manga confirms a lot of things for the reader, whereas the movie expects the reader to kind of get the hint. And in some respects, I like the movie a little more for that because you can kind of speculate, but it doesn't give you outright the answers. In this, it outright gives you the answers. So you take that for what it is. I, I like the confirmation, but I also like the slight ambiguity of the movie too. So, um... One big thing that's left out of the manga is early on in the movie, Domeki, which God love that blessed golden retriever of a man. I love Domeki. He's probably my favorite character in this series. Um, he just, buddy, long suffering man. <laughs> but in, in the movie, he doesn't really see Yashiro have sex too many times. In the manga, right off the bat, Yashiro makes him stand and watch him have sex with another man. And uh, the subordinate comments on it later, like, is this some kind of weird fetish that he has with you? And it's just a part that's left out. Um, also, that same subordinate in the manga confuses Domeki's sister for a boy because he's sitting out in the rain and he has short hair and it's harder to see. Although Yashiro instantly knows that Domeki's sister is a woman. He's like, you need to get your eyes checked. Um, but Domeki... I like in the manga that the subordinate thinks Domeki's gay right off the bat. He's like, oh, it's Domeki's boyfriend out there in the rain. And Yashiro's like, that's not a dude. And I like that the manga, the characters in there are kind of hinting at uh, Domeki's sexuality, even though Domeki doesn't seem quite understanding of it himself. Um, there is more subtext and more conversation between Yashiro and Domeki's sister in the manga and I really like the comparison in the manga. It's only a couple panels. It's very brief but for a second Yashiro compares Domeki's sister's love well because they're stepsisters they're not step siblings are not really even related um compares the love that she has for Domeki with Yashiro's lo love for Kageyama and I really like that moment in the manga because Yashiro is basically saying like oh we both been sexually assaulted. We have that history. We handle it in very different ways, but we also 
both have an unrequited love for another person that we know is never going to be reciprocated. And that's pretty interesting. The manga kind of makes that parallel a little bit more noticeable. Um, also, in the manga, um, Domeki, when he finds out that Yashiro sent his sister away, he gets really mad and he like pounds his fist up against Yashiro's head in the elevator. Um, in the manga, he just walks off. Like, Domeki just leaves. And then later, the subordinates are like, oh, by the way, the boss says he doesn't want to see you for a while. In the movie, Yashiro tells him then and there that he doesn't want to see him for a while. And I get in the movie for the sake of timing that they make it happen in the moment because for pacing in the in a movie, it makes more sense. But I like in the manga that Domeki just leaves without Yashiro saying anything because for the briefest of moments, it doesn't happen often in this manga from what I've read so far, um, Domeki has a place of power. He actually has the power to leave and walk away from the situation, leaving Yashiro to make the next move. And in the movie, Yashiro is still the boss. He still has the upper hand. So I liked that moment in the manga. And then uh, two more things. One, <laughs> uh, or three more things. One is that in the scene where Yashiro makes Domeki dress up as a police officer, in the initial one where he's role playing with him, in the movie, Yashiro is trying to get him to get into the role play. And he's like, oh, are, am I sexually assaulting you? Or are you sexually assaulting me? And and Domeki's like, no. And he cites off this big long string of actual legal jargon. And Yashiro gets fed up and like kicks the chair away and is like, I'm done. In the manga, it's a little bit more on the nose. Now I'm reading a fan translation. So again, translation's an art. So you take that for what it is. But in the manga translation I read, instead of Domeki spouting off all this legal jargon, and that's why he won't get into the role play, he makes a comment and he says, quote, it's not rape if the victim wants it. And that's what Yashiro gets mad at. And I was like, oh no, that was like a big, oh, whew, okay. A big moment there in the series of Domeki just outright saying something and then Yashiro getting mad at it. Um, Yashiro also later on in that scene, when Domeki questions his love for Kagiyama. Yashiro gets f fed up in the movie and just walks away. He's like, I'm not talking about this. And it's implied he's like, this is territory we don't discuss. And I like the manga gives us more insight into both Domeki and Yashiro's thoughts. Because in the manga, um, Yashiro confirms for the audience, he's like, I don't want Domeki knowing about that part of me. So I had to walk away. And it's like, oh, Yashiro, you don't want to admit that you actually can love someone and have intimate, sincere feelings for them? Oh, okay. Um, but it's just confirming that for us. And then the final thing, the final difference in chapters one through seven is that Domeki, it's implied when he's telling Yashiro the story of how he lost his virginity, it's implied that he stops. In the movie, he stops because he's like, oh crud, I might be getting turned on. And the manga basically confirms that he's like, if I'd kept going on with my story, with Yashiro sitting in my lap like that, I probably would have gotten turned on. And it's like, ah, because he, he tells us the audience, he's like, I don't want this to happen because if Yashiro thinks that I'm not impotent anymore, he's probably gonna leave me and just cast me aside because I'm not different than his other subordinates and I'm not going to be of use to him anymore. And so he's like, I just need to keep that part of me hidden. And it's like, oh buddy, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so, um, the last chapter I read was chapter seven and it cuts off right as Yashiro is getting shot. And I was like, crap. So it's still volume two, it's chapter eight. I'm assuming that this chapter might end where the movie ends, but I wasn't sure. So I didn't want to start reading it until I could confirm it. So that's where we're starting today. Volumes one, chapters one through, I think volume one was just chapters one through three and volume two is chapters maybe four through nine. I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to finish volume two today in this reaction video and then go from there. So I'm pretty excited. I want to know the movie just cuts off where he's in the ambulance and Domeki is sitting there shaking with his head in his hands like he's praying and it's like, oh my gosh. And so I'm assuming that we're going to get flashbacks with him and Kageyama, but I just want to know what happens. And so I couldn't wait. I was like, I need to read the manga and find out. So thank you all for hearing me ramble about volume uh, chapters one through seven and volumes one and two. But we are going to start then with Manga Volume 2, Chapter 8 for Twittering Birds Never Fly. And we are going to start that reaction here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we go. All right. Okay. Wow. 
Well, about that. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, the feels. The feels. So, I was, I, I, I just wanted Domeki to get reunited with Yashiro, and it finally happened at the end of this volume. Finally. And it's like, oh my gosh. But, man, the backstory with, with Masumi and him and learning Masumi is a, is a bit more uh, hardcore than we may have uh, gave him credit for. Holy cow. Ho. Oh. And this, I love that this expansion of the Yakuza dynamics, the Yakuza world, Harada is having none of it. Harada is like having none of this, none of this debauchery and getting Nanahara involved and his connections with, with Ryuzaki. And Ryuzaki, we think, is the one that hired the hitman to kill Yashiro because he's trying to get him out of the picture. And Kageyama, Domeki telling Kageyama to go visit him. And then Kageyama admitting that Domeki asked him, like, oh my gosh. And the worst part is, is that I'm fairly sure Yashiro likes Domeki, but Yashiro knows it's not going to work out. Domeki doesn't want Yashiro to know that he likes him because he knows that he, he might get fired from his position. And it's like, come on, y'all just crazy, crazy. Uh, I, there wasn't a lot of, of this whole volume in summing up the movie where the movie left off at it was a lot of exposition leading up into this next part because now Domeki's officially in the business he is getting in the group there's no going back now and him losing his finger and everything like saying he's going to become the right hand for Yashiro and protect him and become his shield like the bodyguard like oh my gosh mm. Mm. And the connection with Kageyama, knowing that from the start, that's how they got reconnected, was the hospital. And basically, you can insinuate that Yashiro got Kageyama hired on as their doctor for the Yakuza through that whole merging and, the, and that acquisition. And I really like the Yakuza dynamics that they're talking about here, getting this web expanded on, Yashiro's place in all of it, and then... Domeki now in his place and all of it too. And Nanahara is an interesting character because his allegiances are so scattered about and kind of hard to read. I mean, Ryuzaki, I get his position. I get Hirata's position, um, Masumi's position. And the fact that Masumi and Kageyama have just met for the first time in this hospital. <sighs> like there's all this history and connections and everything with these characters, but I, this whole volume, I was like, I wanted Domeki and Yashiro just to reconnect, and they're at the end, and Domeki crying for him and being like, because he couldn't protect him, and, and Yashiro's like, don't cry, man. It's, oh my gosh. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that was volumes one and two. And, so, yeah, um, whilst we wait on Hanukkah-kun, um, I'm going to be reviewing these volumes. So we'll do volume three next. And I'm so excited. And then once we're caught up with this series, then I'll, I'll tell you all what my plans are to go from there. But I hope you all enjoyed this. This this series is just getting... Uh, I'm really excited to read and see what happens with this series. So I hope you all enjoyed that reaction. Thank you all so much for watching. And yes, next week, hopefully, I will come back and we will uh, react and talk about volume three of Twittering Birds Never Fly. Have a wonderful week, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all again soon.